Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So Hardware Unboxed today found some pretty interesting information regarding AMD versus NVIDIA graphics cards. Apparently the Radeon graphics cards can be up to 20 to 30% faster than NVIDIA's GeForce cards in certain gaming conditions. Steve did a really good job breaking that down. Here today, we're gonna go over some of the basics. I do recommend you check out his video. Link is in the description below before you get into it. But I think that this is very interesting for a lot of people out there, as a lot of people are going to be using CPUs that he talks about in the video. But before we get to that, in need of a Windows 10 key for your new PC build? Well, you're in luck. Today's sponsor is CDK Deals, and they have a deal for you. CDK Deals is a site that offers excellent deals on games and software. And of course, they offer Windows 10 Pro OEM keys at a ridiculously good price. Just find the best deal and go ahead and pop in my promo code GOG20 to apply an additional 20% off. You can check out securely via credit card or PayPal. And once done, you will go ahead and get direct access to your key via the website as well as in your email. Once you have your key, all you have to do is type in activate in your search bar, go ahead and pop the key in, and poof, you're up and running. To take advantage of this excellent offer, all you have to do is click the link in the description and pin comment down below. Make sure to apply GOG20 to get that additional 20% off. All right, so I'm not gonna rehash over everything that Steve went over in his video. We're just gonna take a look at this quick screenshot here. This is Horizon Zero Dawn. 1080p original quality, and we kind of consider that like medium. Now, I chose this particular slide because we have the Ryzen 5 1600X highlighted on both the 3090 and 5700 XT. What Steve found out is the 5700 XT with something like a Ryzen 5 1600X is actually faster than the 3090 with the same 1600X. That's pretty ridiculous when you talk about a $400 graphics card versus a $1,500 graphics card that came out like a year and a half later. If you look at even something like the Core i3-10100, which I'm glad Steve put that in there as I have a 10100, uh, that comes in at 130 FPS and 136 for the 3090. So a little bit more headroom there and it does actually beat the 5700 XT. But the fact that these are even close is the reason why Steve did his video. And this poses a pretty interesting question. So what exactly is going on here? How can a 5700 XT match an RTX 3090 in basically anything, right? Well, Steve believes that it's due to extra driver overhead from the GeForce graphics cards. He went ahead and tested CPU utilization on both Nvidia graphics cards and AMD graphics cards during the same test scene and found anywhere from 10 to 20% higher CPU utilization on the GeForce graphics card. Now, before we get too far into this, I wanna state this straight up front. This is under very unique conditions. Steve was testing at 1080p medium with basically the fastest graphics cards here today. So essentially pushing the GPU or the CPUs to their absolute maximum, which makes sense. Me personally, I have lower end graphics cards. That's why when I do CPU tests, I use 720p. Same kind of deal. You're, you're using kind of unrealistic conditions for a lot of people, but there are a lot of people out there watching this right now using CPUs in this class, something like an i7 4770 or 4790 or 6700K or 7700K. That's basically what an i3-10100 is. And a lot of you guys do have Ryzen 1600s and 2600s because they were crazy good value. And let's be honest with ourselves. The most popular resolution for gaming is 1080p. Now at 1080p high quality and ultra quality settings, obviously the faster the GPU is, the more headroom you're gonna have. And something like a 3090 is going to break away from the 5700 XT, the more graphically demanding a game gets. But if you are looking to push really high frame rates and you don't really want to upgrade your CPU, if you have one of those CPUs that I mentioned, well, if you want to get the best bang for your buck, apparently now that's Radeon. And if we're being honest, this is kind of a reversal from the way things used to be. I remember back in the Pascal and Maxwell era, Nvidia had much lower driver overhead than AMD. For example, I had an i5-4690 and I paired that with a R9 380 or 385, can't, can't remember what it was at the time, 
But regardless, I had really poor 1% and 0.1% lows. The games were stuttering a lot. And then I switched to a GTX 970. I had no more issues. And this was due to the fact that at that time, NVIDIA did have lower driver overhead than AMD. Significantly so that it was that noticeable. Fast forward here today, we have a complete role reversal. And if you are using older CPUs and want to get maximum performance and maximum frame rates out of those, I mean... I7-4770, it's still kicking, guys. They still work just fine. I bought an i3-10100. It literally plays all the games. It plays all the games, and it plays them just fine. So if you're in the market, and you're like, I want to keep my CPU, but I want to upgrade my graphics card, and if you're looking between, let's say, like the RTX 3060, in between maybe the 3070 level, somewhere in that the new mid-range of graphics cards at this point in time, I hate saying that because that used to be high-end, but... Regardless, uh, it might be worth waiting on the new RX uh, 6700 XT and 6700 as those will offer you higher frame rates on those older CPUs or nowadays more mainstream or budget oriented CPUs. So yeah, this is a, this is really a pretty interesting twist. And if you think about it, this is becomes even more relevant in something like laptops. Intel, for example, with Tiger Lake's still only offers four core and eight thread CPUs on their most advanced technology that they offer here today. So something like a Tiger Lake CPU, according to this data, is going to pair better with an AMD graphics card than it will with an Nvidia graphics card, if you're targeting higher frame rate gaming. Now, if we're being honest, any of these CPUs are gonna play any game at 60 or 120, depending on if it's a fast paced game. They're gonna handle that. But if you're looking to push beyond that, it looks like Radeon's going to be the choice. And like I said, in laptops, that's going to be more relevant because Intel's not offering high core counts. So if you want an NVIDIA graphics card in a laptop and you want maximum performance, then you definitely want one of the new Zen 3 CPUs to make sure that you have enough headroom there. So to me, I find this just pretty interesting. I'm wondering what you guys think down in the comment section below. Um, are you using one of these older CPUs? Like I said, a 4770, 4790, 6700K. I mean, I know that was super popular. I'm sure many of you guys are still using those. I don't think anybody really bought the 7700K because, well, Ryzen came out. Um, but those CPUs, they've been around forever. A lot of people bought the 10100. I recommended it. It was super cheap at the time. And I know tons and tons of people have 1600s and 2600s. I mean, does this change things for you? I'm really kind of curious. If you are in the market for a new graphics card, well, when they become available, let's be honest, later on down the road, when they're both in stock and you could buy one, does this kind of change things for you? For me, it does kind of make me think a little bit more about which card would be better. Like I said, I have a 10100. I got the RTX 2060 in there right now, but there might be some performance left on the table because I'm not pairing it with a Radeon graphics card. So personally, I'm going, hmm, you know, it's just interesting. Want to hear your thoughts? Comment section down below. If you like videos like this, please smash that like button. Please subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell. YouTube is not sending out notifications as well as they should. So if you hit that bell, it helps out a little bit. And of course, if you could share with friends, that helps out as well. Once again, Steve's video, the link is in the description down below. You can get all the gory details. And yeah, I'm really interested to hear your thoughts, but that's really all I have for you guys here today. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.